Hey guys, it's Sonia. Welcome back to my daily vlog. It is late afternoon. I have done with your happy meal and now I get to play a little bit for myself. So I thought today I would take the time to answer a question which has turned into questions. You guys are excited about the new clear tintable glaze that we just put out. It shipped to everybody last week, so if you got in on the pre-order, you probably already have it by now. It's probably already reached your house. And so you guys have been asking about how to use it. Can you use it with our Junk Monkey Milk Paint? Yes, you can. So today I thought I would just chit chat, hang out with you. Let's just, you know, do a few little projects here together. In a nutshell, I always joke and say, because I like me some donuts, that glaze, when you think glaze, glaze goes on, you know, like donuts. It doesn't do anything to the donut. The donut is still there, right? You can still see the donut, but it sits on top of it and it just kind of enhances it, gives it a bit of a different look, a bit of a different taste. So if you're somebody who likes to do different custom looks, glaze can definitely be your friend. Glaze sits on top of uh, dried paint, or you can put it on top of just raw thirsty wood as well and use it like a stain, which I'll show you today. And it doesn't hide, like you'll still see the wood grain if you're using it as a stain. And if you're putting it over the top of paint, you're still also gonna be able to see your paint. It doesn't hide it, it just changes. I always say it's also like looking at a painted piece with a pair of sunglasses on. Brown glaze on antique lace. Uh, let's see, brown glaze on Mocha Madness. Brown glaze on Don't Make Me Blush. Brown glaze on Misty Aqua. You can see I put it heavy over here when I was doing my sample, lighter over there. So that's some fun ideas right there. Oh, so if you put black glaze over vintage white, there you go, you're gonna get something like this. Black glaze over crazy eyes. Black glaze over Liberty Blue right there, just swiped over. I did a mantle, who watched that when we did the mantle in Liberty Blue? and we put the black glaze over it. Oh my gosh, that was one of my favorite looks. I'm gonna play with the glaze today. I'm gonna play with the tintable one, which means that you can do the pre-mixed, already done for you, in a can. or you can customize and make up your own. And that means that you can take any of the Junk Monkey Paint colors, you can blend those colors together to make your own special color and add into the glaze and tint it. So I'm gonna show you using a four to one ratio. So come over here because I got some projects ready and I'll say we should play right after I take a sip of my chai tea. By the way, uh, these were also, I did also nab these from the living room. These were raw wood and I stained them with the black glaze. You might've been with me on that live on Facebook. And this is how they turned out. I love, love, love that stained. Oh my gosh, it just gave me a really cool cozy farmhouse look. So these are downstairs with my white candles, but I just wanted to show you that yes, you can put it over paint, but you can also use it as a beautiful water-based stain. Such easy to use and easy to clean up. So this is what the can looks like. And I thought I would go ahead and just black glaze over this to show you how I glaze and what I use. If you've not done it before, or you just need a reminder, or you just wanna hang out with me, that works too. So I went and I grabbed my cheesecloth as well. This is on my website. This is a color called Seahorse. And I thought I would go ahead and glaze it black to show you. I think it's gonna look gorgeous together. And this door has been painted a million and one times, but that's okay. Oh, by the way, on the other side, we also have our Sugar Plum, one of our newest colors. So, which should we glaze? So I'm gonna grab a brush, put it into my black glaze and swipe it all over. When you do swipe glaze, it's important that you swipe it on in the same direction that you painted. The reason why it's important is because it will give you much more of a professional finish versus constantly painting in opposite directions. So that's a really, really good tip. You don't need a whole lot of glaze, but just you know, get it completely covered, whether this is a piece of decor or a cabinet door or anything like that. By the way, sometimes I get the question of is, do I need to seal or is glaze a sealer? Glaze is not a sealer. Glaze is a decorative um, look that you can give to pieces. And so right now I am giving a faux finish 
on top of my paint and then I'll seal at the very end. Okay, so you can see that the black glaze is on top of here and the longer I let it sit on top of my paint, remember that paint is porous, I always say it's like a sponge. So right now my black glaze is sucking into my wood pores. So what you never wanna do is let it just dry like this because it's meant to brush on and then to come and follow it up with some cheesecloth and to go ahead and swipe it off. So the faster you act, the less the less effect, meaning like it's not gonna be so dramatic. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be dramatic because I think I brought my scissors downstairs last night to the kitchen table. All right, alert, alert. Let me go find my scissors. So always cut a little bit of your cheesecloth. I always say just like a snowball in your hand. And I like to just spread it out, open it up. It's because all these lines will give you beautiful lines when you swipe off your glaze but very gently, not tightly. Man, it looks like a loofah, right? Just, it's very, very soft to the touch to be able to wipe it off. Okay, before we do that though, let's spray a little bit of water on top of our cheesecloth. Spritz, spritz, spritz off to the side here. Maybe I'll get a little bit more damp. Two more spritzes there. And now we start to wipe. So let's go ahead and wipe the glaze off. Now remember what I said, the longer I leave it on here, the darker it's going to get. So that part is up to you. You'll also start to notice that you, um, you know, you have a heavier touch, a softer touch with your hands. Also, you can fold it over. All that impacts the amount of glaze that's left behind. So the beautiful thing about glaze is that it sets up in the edges, right? We're not trying to wipe it out of the edges. I'll do a swipe over, but I want it to settle down there to get that look almost like dust is settled in the corners. Let's do a swipe down the middle. That's why I always say, if you can find these cabinet doors that have these beautiful, um, you know, just step up, step downs into them, they make the most beautiful cabinets that are glazed. Don't forget your edge as well. And now we have my friend glazed this cabinet door together. Do you see the difference it makes when you add a little bit, I'm getting that wooly out there. Um, you can also shake your cheesecloth off to the edge if you want. Don't like open it up over your, your paint project. That's a good tip. But there we go. Now we are glazed. Isn't that pretty? We're just going to let this uh, dry. Don't touch it. And then once it's dry, just come in and then you can go ahead and you can seal it. And we are done. So you can do this over the top of paint. That's like I say, you're just basically changing up the look of the color. You can still see the color. It's like looking at it with a pair of sunglasses and just aging it out. So the black is a really cool look. Okay, now I wish I had painted my cabinets this color and glazed it with our black glaze. <laughs> Who out there is like, I want that look on my cabinets. Oh my goodness. So I always try to swipe as straight as possible crossways right here down like pieces of a puzzle. So each, when I look at this door, I'm looking at a line here, a line on the side, a line here, a line here, and a trace out around the center. And I do each piece very um, separately and very gently. I also do not work on 20 doors at one time because remember how I said your glaze will start to set up immediately and pull it into the paint pores. So you only wanna do one door at a time because by the time if you glazed and put the glaze coverage on 20 doors, by the time you went back to the very first one, boy, your glaze could be pretty well dried on and you're like, no, it's too dark, I can't wipe it off. So just do one door at a time. Just do one side of your furniture at a time. And that's how easy it is. And this is why I love the cheesecloth because you cannot tell me that that does not look fabulous. And you know, when you use other fabrics, it, it's hard to get that same look. I mean, this is just perfect. It is just perfect. I love it. All right, so let's go ahead and work on another project. Okay, so let's work on these frames here. I got two, I got these at Wally World and in the unfinished wood section. It doesn't have any glass into it and this is just a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna leave that in there because if I glaze um, this, I don't want it to get all messy inside. Our latest product is the, what I call the ghost. It has magic powers, the in, invisibility cloak, okay? You can add your Junk Monkey paints into this it works with a junk monkey family of paints and you add your color, your favorite glaze color into it and you can make the same glaze 
that I just did, except you control the color, whatever tint you want it to be. So let's play. How about we add some of our, we call the original recipe, the clay and mineral paint with the resins into it. And then we'll do a sample as well, maybe on the other one. And I'll show you how to use the milk paint in our clear tintable glaze and how to make that work. How about that? So you can put it over paint, but let's just do a sample right now where I put it over raw wood. And let me pick out a color to change this into. By the way, if I were to put this right now on top of this raw wood with no junk monkey paint into it, it would just be invisible. It would dry, invisible, and clear, okay? So it's important to know that this needs your color to be added into it. And even though it looks white right now, it will dry clear. You know, I just had an idea. I was picking what color to use and I thought, why not use the seahorse? This is what I have left over from painting that beautiful blue piece in my living room. Why not show you how you can take this color and turn it into a glaze? And you just saw the seahorse get glazed with the black glaze. Let's turn the seahorse into a glaze and we will glaze and stain this raw frame. So make sure you always stir. By the way, we did a restock on the seahorse here, a mini restock. I think they're still currently in stock. So if you need this color, you may find them back active on the website right now. I can't guarantee it, but check fast. Okay, so here is what we do. We've got our invisibility cloak, our ghost. That's why you see little ghost on the side of this can right here underneath my finger. Okay, so here is how I do it. If I had a spoon, it might work out, but um, I am one of those people that I just wing it, okay? So you wanna do four to one, meaning that you do four equal parts of this to one equal part of your color, okay? So I'm just gonna be real simple here. If I had a teaspoon, I'd just go one, two, three, four, and then one of that, boom, mix it up. Okay, we're gonna keep it pretty simple here. One, two, three, four, okay? So whatever, you know, whatever you're using to measure it out with, just keep it equal. So that was four and one, four to one, just like that, okay? So I've got more of the glaze and then one part of my seahorse. Stir well. What I never want to do is overpower my glaze mixture with too much of the Junk Monkey paint. So four to one for me works perfectly. Okay, let me grab a brush, go bananas, pull down our frame, same idea. This is my glaze. I'm going to go right over the top, go with the wood grain. inside edge. I've got my seahorse glaze on. In this case, it's on raw wood. I'm going to use it like a stain. I'm going to grab my cheesecloth, about a snowball in my hands. I'm going to open up my cheesecloth, try to get it away from my project so I'm not having any lint fall on my project, any pieces of the fabric. Get about a snowball size in your hand. Grab your water spritzer, do a few spritzes to get it damp, not soaking wet, and then start your swipe off. The longer I leave it sit, the more deeper of a blue glaze I'm going to have. It's gonna stay behind. And now we start to wipe. Oh, that's pretty. Oh my gosh, guys. This never gets old. Look how pretty that is. Wow. Do our edges. Those of you out there that do um, rustic signs, even if you're using raw wood, I'm telling you, get the clear tintable glaze. Do whatever color you want, you know, that fits your style. It opens up so many possibilities. This little piece inside, I'll tear out here in just a little bit. Who would think that you can, you know, just see such beautiful looks out of 
a plain wooden frame from Walmart, but look at that beautiful frame. So all I would do now is leave this, let it dry, and then come behind and I can monkey shine it if I want. Or for me, I'd probably put my personal love of look for what I would do here would be to take the glossy banana peel and then leave that in a nice glossy finish. Guys, is that not gorgeous? Seahorse glaze. Oh my gosh, I'm in love. All right, let's do one with milk paint. For the milk paint, I went and got my stash out. There's so many different colors that you can use in the milk paint line as well. I'm gonna go with a blue that I found. It is a, this is a bag that I've had kicking around forever. Now to use our milk paint, all you need to know is to do, to activate your paint in the bag is to do equal parts of the paint pigment in your bag with equal parts room temperature water. So I found these real fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab into my milk paint bag. I'm gonna grab one tablespoon of my ocean blue. Now I just need equal parts room temperature water. I'm just gonna steal it from my water spritzer bottle. It usually just sits around. And guys, it's um, already room temperature, right? Because it's just been sitting around. So that's perfect. Now let's stir that up real good. This is such a pretty blue color. We have ocean blue and we also have whale of a tail. All right. So the reason why I wanna get this mixed up before I put it in to my um, clear glaze is because I don't want any of the milk paint powder to clump up. So this is why it's important. If you wanna do the milk paint to tint your glaze, you most definitely can do it. If you add the powder directly to the tintable glaze, then you could get some clumps. It's like putting flour, you know, when you're making gravy, right? So the best way to do it is to activate your milk paint powder into paint itself, which is what we just did by adding equal parts equal parts junk monkey milk paint powder and the room temperature water. And now we have a nice smooth paint, which now brings us back to the point we were when we started working with the seahorse glaze. Same idea, same process. So let's grab our next candidate for a makeover. Look how pretty that color is right there. And we do the same thing. So we've got a clean bowl here, same idea stir really, really, really well, all the way to the bottom. One, two, three, four. Let me get this to one side of my bowl here. And one. Now my glaze is, is not changing, it's becoming colorful. Okay, let's go ahead and brush that on. I'm gonna let this soak in a little bit and then I'm gonna wipe it off. So we've got cheesecloth, a couple spritzes to dampen it, and now we swipe. I guess I forgot to do the inside. A little lip in there. So now I have an ocean blue glaze. A nice floating color. Definitely feels beachy. So again, you can see, right, this is the black glaze. I think I may have put a little extra, I think I went over twice on this. So you could do that too, that's a good tip, that this could set up, and if you want this to be a little more vibrant, once this has completely dried down, do another layer of the glaze and let it build up to go a little bit more brighter. Or maybe you just love that wood wash just the way it is, just like this. So pretty. Okay, so I went ahead and washed the brush. Now I'm gonna go back into the paint. 
So this is it used as a glaze, as a stain. Now I'm going to get the actual paint on my brush and the paint is gonna match my stain, right? So now I can do that beautiful eyeliner effect that we talk about. So you've got the color in the frame and now you're pulling it out. You're making it just feel so much more vibrant and it stands out. You can take your finger and just swipe it over the edge if you want, a little more softer. You have time to play. Truth be told, I usually would hold it like this. There you go, you can get a better handle on it. Hey Stanley, come to say hi Stanley Cat. If you mess up, just swipe it very, very lightly with your cheesecloth. Just like that. Oh, that's pretty. I'm gonna have to leave that just like that. I don't wanna touch it too much. Okay, so I just use my paint to do my edging and I've got the milk paint in my clear glaze to create that beautiful blue. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. I could see that on a bookcase or a beachy bookcase or something like that, which we could go back in here now and do the same thing. Cool, love that. Okay, one, two. And what was our other project we did today? And this is our cabinet door. She's still sticky, so I can't touch her too much. So pretty, can you guys see that? The key is after you paint something to not touch it too much and just to leave it and let it dry because we want to pick at it. I'm gonna lay this back flat over here. So I hope you guys got some good ideas and yeah, it's just kind of making the, the wheels turn for what you can do to create some cool custom looks. I know I had fun playing today. So I'm gonna clean up my mess and I will see you guys back here again tomorrow. Okay, hit that button, Stanley. Right there, that button, right there. Can you touch it? See you guys.